Hi, and welcome to Sensory Percussion 2 Drum School, your guide to the software component of the Sensory Percussion Sound System. In this video, we're going to go over how to send MIDI out from Sensory Percussion 2. The presets in the Sunhouse library are all built around audio samples, but Sensory Percussion 2 is also capable of translating the nuances of your playing into MIDI data, essentially turning your drum set into one big, super flexible MIDI controller. This allows you to control external devices like a lighting fixture, play MIDI instruments and plugins inside of your DAW, and manipulate video hosted inside of VJ software. All from behind the drums. Sending MIDI out of Sensory Percussion 2 works much the same way as sending audio. When you're playing audio samples, the modules that hold the samples live inside of your set. Then all of the decisions about which physical devices and channels that audio gets sent to are made via the analog hardware outputs, which can be found in the hardware outputs panel on the bottom. Sending MIDI works very similarly. You need a MIDI module inside of your set and a MIDI hardware output in your hardware outputs panel. Just like how a sampler generates audio, MIDI generator modules generate MIDI messages and determine how your playing is converted into different MIDI values. MIDI hardware outputs are managed in the hardware output panel and these route the MIDI data from your generator modules to the output device that you want to send to. MIDI notes send binary on or off messages. Each of these messages has its own note value from 0 to 127, which maps directly to a pitch on a keyboard. In terms of mapping them to parameters, they're typically used to control toggles or trigger buttons. That's because these types of parameters only require a simple on-off message. But if you want to control a knob or a fader, that's when you would use MIDI CC messages. CC stands for Continuous Control, and these allow you to send any control value from 0 to 127, rather than just note on or note off. And in certain situations, a CC can move gradually from one value to the other, hitting every value in between on the way. This makes them perfect for controlling things like the dry wet knob of an effect or a volume fader. So let's see this in action. We're going to use both note and CC messages to control Superior Drummer, which is a virtual drum library that can be played with MIDI. For this example, we'll send a note value that's mapped to the hi-hat. The CC messages from Sensory Percussion determine how opened or closed that hi-hat is. I assign velocity to control CC1, which means that the harder I play, the more open and splashy the hi-hat will sound. When you first create a MIDI notes generator, you'll be prompted to add a drum input filter. The reason for this is that the MIDI notes generator assigns MIDI note values to different zones of the drum. Kick drums have a different number of zones from snares and toms, so that's why we need to specify what kind of drum will be controlling this generator. Once you've added an input filter, you can see that the module automatically populates with different zones of that drum input type. I added a snare input filter, so we get snare zones. If I create a new MIDI notes generator and choose a kick input filter, we'll see the zones of the kick appear. To the right of each zone is the name column. By default, they're all named MIDI note, but you can double click on any name to edit that name and give it your own. Each zone has a MIDI note value that it will send, which we can see in this note column. By default, the first zone starts from the note value C3 and goes up by one semitone for each additional zone. You can change the outgoing MIDI note value by clicking and dragging up or down, using your up or down arrows on your keyboard, or typing in a new value. And finally, we have the length column, which sets the amount of time between the note on and note off messages sent by that zone. You can think of this length parameter like the amount of time that you're holding down a key 
on a MIDI keyboard. If you want to send multiple notes from a single zone, you can add a note using this plus button on the right. You can also drag an existing note from one zone to another. To add a zone, you can click on this zone button. This will open a dropdown that lists all of the zones, both active and inactive. You can click an inactive zone to add it, or click on an active zone to remove it. You also have the option to add or remove all the zones at once, or reset the generator module to its default state. You can also delete zones by selecting them and pressing delete on your computer keyboard. MIDI CC generators are set up in the same way as MIDI notes generators. When you first create one, it will automatically populate with four different CCs, all of which have the generic name Control Event. You can double click on a CC's name to rename it. And you can also change its outgoing CC number. The knob in the value column is what actually generates the CC messages. When I move the knob, the CC indicator light flashes on the MIDI hardware output, which means that it's sending CC messages. All the way to the left sends a value of 0, while all the way to the right sends 127. The big difference between MIDI notes and CC generators is that CC generators aren't automatically mapped to the zones of a drum. If I add a snare input filter and play the snare, you'll see that the value knob doesn't move and no signal is generated. In order to move this knob and generate CC messages, you have to create an assignment on the knob. So I'll right click on the knob to make an assignment and choose velocity. Now the position of the knob will follow how hard I play, as will the CC values that are being sent. MIDI router is a fairly specific type of MIDI generator module. On its own, it simply produces the MIDI note C3 every time it's played, which is not that useful. But when it's combined with the pitch and scale panel of any module, it becomes very useful because it will now send any of that pitch information out as MIDI notes. This pitch and scale panel exists on every module, and it's usually used to transpose audio samples. But with a MIDI router, these pitches are sent out as MIDI note values. I'm using the panel on the router itself, but the router will also pass pitch information from any parent module to the left of it. MIDI hardware outputs allow you to make choices about where the MIDI signal from your generators are sent. Indicator lights tell you what kind of MIDI signal is being sent out. These lights are a good thing to check if you're troubleshooting MIDI connections. If the indicators don't light up, then you're not sending MIDI out of sensory percussion. The source dropdown controls the internal routing between MIDI generators in your set and MIDI hardware outputs. If I change the output channel on my generator from MIDI 1 to MIDI 2 and play it, I'll no longer see signal on my hardware output because it's set to receive MIDI 1 only. If I change the hardware output source to MIDI 2, I will now see signal going out of it again. These MIDI channel dropdowns on the hardware outputs and the generators work the same way, except they're not just for internal routing. This channel information will also be sent to the output device. You can set each generator to send on different channels, and if the hardware output is set to incoming, then that channel information will be retained. If the hardware output is set to anything other than incoming, then it will override all other channel specifications, and all MIDI that goes through this hardware output will be sent via that channel. How you route MIDI is up to you. Sometimes you might want each MIDI generator in your set to send to its own hardware output, each of which is sending to a different output device. Or you might want all your generators sending on the same channel to the same device. This system is flexible in order to accommodate different situations. The max note length parameter determines the maximum amount of time that a note will be held before a note off message is sent. In the MIDI notes generator, you can choose the length of individual notes, whereas in the MIDI hardware output, the note length is applied to all notes that pass through that output. If the max note length specified in the hardware output is shorter than the max note length specified in the MIDI generator, the hardware output will override the generator. Finally, we have the output device dropdown. This allows you to choose where the MIDI signal goes once it leaves sensory percussion. If you choose Evans Portal, it will send MIDI out of the 5-pin MIDI outputs on the back of the Evans Portal. 
From there, you can connect to a physical device, like a synth or a drum machine, via MIDI cables. Right now, we have IAC Driver Bus 1 selected. This is a virtual MIDI bus that allows you to route MIDI between different programs. Earlier, we showed an example of sending MIDI notes and CCs out of sensory percussion to play Superior Drummer, which is a virtual MIDI instrument hosted in Ableton. Let's break down how that's done step by step starting from the very beginning, but this time let's play a stock Ableton synth. First, I'll create a MIDI router. Then I'll open up the Pitch and Scale panel, choose a scale, and make an assignment on the Pitch Control bar. Then I'll create a MIDI CC generator and create a velocity assignment on CC1. Now we have notes being sent from the MIDI router and CC values being controlled by velocity. Then I'll create a MIDI hardware output. Since we want to send MIDI to Ableton, we'll need to use the previously mentioned IAC bus driver. This virtual MIDI bus comes pre-installed on all Mac machines, and it allows you to send MIDI from one application to another. If you're using Windows, you can download third-party virtual MIDI buses such as MIDI Translator Pro from Bohm Software. If you don't see the IAC bus listed as an output device option, you might need to activate it in your audio MIDI settings. To do this, navigate to Audio MIDI Setup on your computer. This can be found in the Applications folder. Then go to Window, Show MIDI Studio. There you'll see the IAC driver. Double click to open the IAC driver properties window. Make sure that the device is online and it has at least one port created. Apply those settings and you will now see it listed in the output device dropdown in Sensory Percussion. Now we've got two types of MIDI being sent out of Sensory Percussion. So let's go over to Ableton to see how to map it. Here I have a MIDI track with Wavetable loaded, which is a stock synth in Ableton. I have this track set to receive MIDI from the IAC driver bus, and I have it record enabled. So now I'll go ahead and play the snare. Now we can see and hear the notes generated by this MIDI router being sent through the MIDI hardware output to the IAC bus, which are then received by this MIDI track in Ableton and used to play the Wavetable synth. So the note values from the MIDI router automatically map to different notes on the Wavetable MIDI instrument, but the CC values that we're sending don't automatically map to any parameters. To do that, we'll need to enter MIDI mapping mode by pressing Command M. From here, we can select any of the highlighted parameters to control them via CC. I'll select this filter cutoff knob. With MIDI mapping mode still active, I'll go back to sensory percussion and move the CC knob. Now, this filter cutoff frequency is being controlled by CC1 in Sensory Percussion. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and map the wave position bar as well. Now, when I play from quiet to loud, we'll be able to see and hear this CC control. So those are the basics of sending MIDI out from Sensory Percussion 2. For more detailed information, head to the Sunhouse User Manual. Keep an eye out for more tutorials to come, and thanks for watching.